Yesterday we received this letter. In the Supreme Court of Appeal of South Africa, in the matter between the Hayes Club and the Minister of Police, Minister of Justice and Correctional Services, National Director of Public Prosecutions, Minister of Trade and Industry and Competition, the Regional Magistrate of Weinberg and the Minister of Health. This is the appellant's notice of withdrawal. Please take notice that the above appellants hereby withdraw their appeal under the above case number on the basis of a written agreement between the appellants and the opposing respondents that inter alia all parties are to pay their own costs. Please take further notice that the further terms of the written agreement between the appellants and the opposing respondents have been agreed to be confidential and so are not detailed herein. The Registrar of the Supreme Court of Appeal in Bloemfontein. Ladies and gentlemen, the Hayes Club case is over. The appellants, uh, the Hayes Club, have decided for personal reasons to settle this case withdraw their appeal in Bloemfontein, um, and that is that. And I'm really pleased to have uh, our attorney for our amicus curiae appointment in the Supreme Court of Appeal, uh, Stefan Bezadenot. Uh, our very own uh, 420 attorney, Stefan, will be known to, to a lot of you. Uh, he's very active in our cannabis community giving sound legal advice, and he was certainly um, our first choice of attorney to represent us as we attempted to give advice to the court and really help the court, because to be amicus curiae means to be a friend of the court. But unfortunately, now we're not going to have the chance to, to have our, um, our voice in this particular case. So, Stefan, what was your first reaction? Thank you for having me, Myrtle. Um, I was a little disappointed, I'm not going to lie. I think many of us was looking forward to this judgment um, and hopefully, obviously, in a positive light. But uh, I think it's very easy to sit on the other side of the table versus when you've been the one carrying the flag. So whatever those reasons are, we may never know. But um, yes, I am unfortunately very, well, a little disappointed because a lot of work and time and effort and costs went into these proceedings. But at the end of the day, as you mentioned, we're just an amicus. So we are not dominus litus, meaning we are not the, the main dog in these proceedings. And unfortunately, therefore, if there's no matter proceeding, then there's no need for any friends of the court. Um, so therefore, all our arguments, uh, therefore, become mute because the matter will not be proceeding next week as originally planned. Yeah, you know, we have been speaking to also our other legal teams and getting people's opinions uh, as what this means for this matter that is so precious to us here at Fields of Green for All and is so vital for the livelihoods of so many South Africans, whether it be cultivators, whether it be users, whether it be those people who have invested a lot of time and money in, in trying to be as close to legal as you possibly can. You know, um, we have never said that Dhaka private clubs are legal. Dhaka private clubs are not legal because Otherwise, we wouldn't have had to intervene in, in this case and offer our services as amicus because there's this dreadful grey area. And what we were looking for was a declaratory order from the Constitutional Court. So whatever way it went in Bloemfontein, this case would have gone to the Constitutional Court and we would have had some sort of clarity on what is on what is going on with with the Dacher private clubs so now we're back in the position that we were before the Hayes club were raided and arrested but there is still the binding court order that says Dacher private clubs are illegal more gray area it has always been our opinion that 
Dhaka private clubs should be legal given the Prince um, judgment of, of 2018, should be legal in terms of the Cannabis for Private Purposes Act that was signed into law in uh, May 2024. Maybe the government also thought their argument was moot. Um, maybe we're going to see some regulations out for public comment sometime soon. We just don't know. So, Stefan, what what are you going to advise um, um, clubs going forward? Well, if you've already established a club, I think it's at this point very important that we try and protect ourselves as well as yes. possible. Uh, and the only way we can do that is to truly educate ourselves on really how a club should operate. And, you know, I think now the, the context of privacy is going to become so much more important because uh, so many clubs have, I think operated a little bit more in the gray space, given that there was this pending case, hopefully coming out soon. Um, but now in this specific instance, there would be nothing stopping them if they prove that you are in fact dealing. And so it's very important, I think, to do your research, educate yourself and make sure that you've got enough documentation in place that you can legally protect yourself because it's very difficult when a policeman walks in to try and explain to him how the, the Dacha private clubs work. Uh, and they have very little patience for, for your explanations. So there's directives that we'd like to highlight them and draw their attentions to, uh, to, to remind them of certain rights. And these are directed to them specifically, to their department heads. Um, but on the other hand, you also need to prepare yourself for perhaps written submissions that you might need to make because we all know that police doesn't really always seem to be in the friendliest mood and they mm -hmm. can affect an arrest whenever they want but that doesn't mean necessarily all of these cases get enrolled and gets prosecuted so i think therefore it's very important to seek legal advice so that you've got some documentation to present as well to the prosecutor as well to, so that in the event, even often arrest to try and prevent that you're being prosecuted and criminally, um, you know, held liable. Well, isn't that just the case? And certainly for the last 15 years, the one thing that has always been at the top of our agenda is to just stop the cops. But right now, uh, I think we're all just a, a little bit in shock. We are busy processing this. But as you all know, Fields of Green for All is a bigger picture organization. And we've had an idea that maybe this was going to happen uh, for a few months already, but it only hit us when we actually got the piece of paper. So we're always here to answer your questions. You can always contact us uh, during office hours uh, on our helpline, uh, which is open 24 hours for, for arrests only. You can contact us in the comments below, ask your questions, contact us via uh, social media. But you'll be hearing a lot more about this particular issue now. This little video was really just to make the announcement and assure everybody that Fields of Green for All has always got your back. There's always another way and there's always a path forward. So let's let's just keep going and light one up for Jules. Thanks. Huh. <laughs>